Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, the pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. In this episode, I'm going to go over beta blocker generations, mnemonic pro bam car lab, and I'll explain what I mean there. So before we start uh, with the stems, let's just make sure that you've heard this, that the allal at the end of a beta blocker, which is, indicates it's a beta blocker, there's some exceptions to that, but uh, it's two Bs backward. So it's propranolol, but if you connect the, the O and the L, it should look like two backward Bs. And the stems are a little bit different, but also cause a problem. So the first generation stem, alol, is the same as the second generation stem, alol, O-L-O-L. And that causes a problem because propranolol has beta-1 and beta-2 blocking activity, and then second generation has beta-1 with bisoprolol, atenolol, metoprolol. So that's why you kind of need the mnemonic to separate like, okay, which is first generation, the pro, think of primary, it's your first grade, and then BAM, B-A-M, for your second generation. And then I put CarLab just to give you two of the third generation ones. These guys uh, are very clever in their stems and they kind of fix the, the alal problem, if you want to call it that. So these third generations will vasodilate, and you see D-I-L-O-L in Carvet de Lol, and you see A for alpha blocker in Labate Lol. So that little change, the DIL and the A for alpha blocking, uh, helps you know, okay, well, these are third generation. At least I get these guys, Uh, but I still need to be able to tell the difference between first and second generation. Okay. So when we kind of go to the next thing, the indications, angina, CHF, hypertension. Really, when we're going to the generations, we're going to almost avoid problems as much as they are indications. So when you look at propranolol, uh, the, when they first came out, I mean, this came out so long ago, uh, many of the patients were like, my migraines are gone. It's like, oh, well, let's just try to use it for that. And propranolol is really good at um, helping prevent uh, migraines in the first place. And the issue is, though, because of that beta-2 blocking activity, we have these second-generation bisoprolol, atenolol, metoprolol, which avoid the asthmatic issue of beta-2 block aid in general. Uh, But then we want something that might prevent reflex tachycardia, so if you can think of carvedilol and labetalol as alpha blockers with beta blocking activity so that when you vasodilate, which is a problem with the alpha blockers like prazosin, uh, you can prevent that reflex tachycardia because you are suppressing uh, beta-1 receptors. So I just wrote that down here. So propranolol again is the beta-1 and beta-2 blocker. Bisoprolol atenolol, metoprolol, these are the beta-1 only, and then carvedilol, labetalol, these are the beta-1, beta-2, and alpha-1 blockers. Okay. So again, adverse effects tend to come from the mechanism of action. So bradycardia can be a problem. So if you get the heart rate below 60, and really a contraindication when you don't really want somebody to go that low, uh, bronchospasm, specifically with that propranolol where you are you know, battling that beta-2 receptor. Uh, fatigue is really a big deal because think about it. You go on a run and your heart rate increases, but you're taking a medicine that won't let your heart rate increase. So you're going to get fatigued. Uh, heart block, if you, you know, I guess the dosage is way too high, use too much of it. Uh, And then reflex tachycardia can come from stopping it abruptly. So imagine that you're kind of pushing down on a spring and then all of a sudden you let your hand go. Well, that's kind of what you're doing if you take away a beta blocker, you know, very, very quickly. And the considerations kind of come from the adverse effects. So you want to be considerate of somebody who has asthma or COPD because 
if we're using a beta blocker, how do we choose the right one? Well, if they've got asthma, then we're not going to choose that first generation. Somebody has bradycardia, certainly we don't want to suppress their, uh, reduce their blood pressure too low. Uh, and then this one's a big one. You mask the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. So normally someone who's hypoglycemic is going to get kind of very jittery and have palpitations, but with a beta blocker, they may not feel that at all. Uh, and go into a hypoglycemic state and uh, it might be masked or covered up. So again, hopefully that quick review of beta blockade and the generations kind of puts it together uh, really quickly. Uh, and if you need my help, Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com. And this information is provided for informational purposes only. This is not medical advice. If you have a medical question, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.